for season 11. Hey, I'm backstage. Right behind these curtains is a mystery guest getting ready for my biggest Smith show ever. We've been keeping the mystery guest's identity secret. Hey, are you ready in there? I'm ready. All right, by the end of the show, we're gonna unmask who they really are and also unmask the biggest medical myths along the way. I'm gonna help put the finishing touches on their mask. In the meantime, take a look at one of the hints of who it might be. Hey, Dr. Oz, I'm super excited to start pulling the mask off some super common myths that we both want to bust. I have been one of your biggest myth-busting fans since back in the day. Watching you literally blow the lid off one myth Ooh. after another. From belly fat myths. Your belly is uncontrollably large now. To smelly gas myths. They explode. To myths about tanning from a sunburn. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's what happens. That's why burning is never a good idea if you want to get a tan. Now, in 2020, we're unmasking myths some folks are still falling for. But first, I know you want a clue who's behind this mask. I'm on one of your favorite TV shows that's all about the drama. All right. Let's bring out our mask mystery guest. Please join us. Well disguised. I am. So here's the question for everyone here, in the audience here and at home. Can you guess who is behind this mask? And unmask the biggest myths in the meantime. We'll do both at the same time, all right? We're gonna do a countdown. We got the five biggest myths. You can play along? Let's do it. All right, number five is the belief that even dentists debate. You don't need to floss your teeth anymore. Is that a myth or is it fact? <laughs> audience, what do you think? Myth? You don't think you have to floss anymore? All right, this caused a lot of controversy recently. What I do you mean, think? I don't want to be near anyone who doesn't floss. I don't want to <laughs> have any conversations with these people. But the question is, are you healthier? Although I get it, grant you, if it's smelling better, we'll be part of the puzzle. Come on over. Right. Americans hate flossing, by the way. Hate it. 35% of Americans would rather do an unpleasant activity than floss. Things like clean the toilet. I mean, things they really don't want to do normally. So let's find out if this belief is a myth or a fact. We have an experiment that will reveal the answer. The mask mystery guest, will you be my assistant? Of course. Okay, so you get the brush. All right. These are the teeth, all right? And here's the deal. Normally, your tooth, as you eat food, will begin to accumulate bits of plaque like this, right? And you brush the tooth, and you get all that plaque off. Look at that. That's a good job. I mean, oh my goodness, you're making a mess, too. How am I doing? You're, making, you're doing great. That's perfect. That's plaque. perfect. You got rid of all the plaque in the front, right? See, that looks pretty good there. Most of it's gone. But what about up top here. That doesn't look so good, does it, guys? No. No. That's hidden plaque. All right, now, mask celeb, take some floss. Okay. Come on, come over here. When you floss, show me how you, show me your technique. I mean, you gotta get in between, right? You gotta do a good job. Here we go, hold on. Yeah, oh, that looks good. Doesn't that feel good, everybody? Ah. Uh, right? You gotta get rid of all the parsley, everything that goes in between the two. Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't you love when that happens and the floss pulls something out? Right. You get dirty, celebrity guests, you okay? I'm good, how am I doing? You're doing great, doing? but that's the goal, right? Yeah. Soon the stuff's gone, now look at it. It's a whole different ball game in there, right? And a little bit more working and you won't have much left. So if you don't take care of that plaque, then you get problems, including bleeding. Take a look at this photo, it's a little gruesome. This is what happens with bleeding gums and inflammation. Ooh. Yeah, you don't want that, do you guys? Right? And gum disease is linked to heart disease, brain health problems, premature births, all kinds of problems. But you know what? Don't take it from me. I want to bring in dentist Justin Rushbaum. Come, come on, Dr. Rushbaum. Join us. Nice to see you. So break it down for us. Don't identify our celebrity guest, please. I won't. Now that you're close <laughs> enough, you might be able to <laughs> peek in there. Do you think we should be flossing? Absolutely. First of all, it's free. Yes. Um, unless, <laughs> unless you have a dentist that strangely charges you for floss, which I imagine they don't. But when you get bacteria between the teeth, so I see, I treat thousands of, of teeth for dental decay per year and the enamel is thinnest in between the teeth. Right in here. Right in there, and has the shortest route to the nerve in between the teeth. And obviously when we get decay that has hit the nerve, what do we need? 
a root canal. And obviously, oh. everybody wishes they would avoid that. Yikes. So flossing is, is extremely, extremely important. That's a nice look. That's what you want. And kudos exactly. to your art department on this. This is amazing. That's what you want. <laughs> no nerve. I didn't realize that. The nerves are easier to get uh, impacted from the side than from the middle. So. Exactly. The enamel is thinnest in between the teeth. So obviously, the route to the nerve is shortest in that area, so decay progresses much more rapidly in between the teeth than it does anywhere else on the tooth. So the statement, just to be clear with everybody, that you don't need to floss your teeth anymore is actually a myth. We're on page <laughs> with this. How often should we floss? The American Dental Association says you should floss once a day. Uh, for me, I recommend flossing after dinner because saliva, which is your best friend in protecting yourself from dental decay, is uh, at its lowest concentrations when you sleep. So by removing that bacteria before you go to sleep is the most important thing to do. You floss wow. at night, Mr. Yes? I do, you I do. do. I floss every day and night. Well, actually, just talking about teeth. Can I, may I see your teeth? We took a picture of it. Is okay. that okay? Yeah. Reveal the teeth. <laughs> there she is. There are her teeth, a beautiful smile. But I feel like we need another hint. Give us something else. What, what else do you do? All right, well, I'm on a reality show. Oh. I'm on a, a hit reality show. Even better, a hit reality Lots show. Lots of drama. <laughs> Which reality show are you mm. on but that has a lot of drama? Audience, any guesses? Just yell out. Housewives. Oh, there's some Housewives fans out there. A couple other things. All right, well, we're, we're getting closer, maybe. We'll give it. Thank you very much. In the meantime, yeah. take a look at number four on our countdown. Nike no, I feel like I don't want to break your finger. You gotta love doing that. Masked mystery guest, do you crack your knuckles? I am so guilty. I do it all the time. So what do you think? Do you think cracking your knuckles is a problem? Well, I hope not. All right, come on over. Let's get cracking on this myth. See what I did there? Yes. Cracking on this I, myth. I got you. Yeah, yes, see how impressed you are. One. Okay, so here we are with the hand. Which is the most cracked joint of the body? It's the knuckle. Most of us go crack like that, all right? So if this goes inside the knuckle, when you crack your knuckle, there are bubbles actually that are in there. When you pull on it, you release from that synovial fluid in our joints, those bubbles. See them, they're popping. They, and so it's not the bones cracking, it's not the joint the cartilage cracking, it's the noise made when gas bubbles burst. So it's just like bubble wrap, right? Oh, look at this. Ha! Woo! You like this sensation? See, like this gives you a certain satisfaction. Everyone likes this. Everyone likes this. All right, studies show that, oh, she's gonna fall. <laughs> studies show that knuckle crackers have the same function, the same range as everybody else. It doesn't actually hurt your joints at all. What really causes problems with your joints is wear and tear, because you're doing things that aren't good for your joints. So you almost always have pain when that case. So if you crack your knuckles, you're not getting pain, it's not a problem. So, the unmasked, this medical belief, I mean, even real clear, cracking your knuckles, creating arthritis, it's a myth. It's not real. Yes, that's good, this is good news. Now, the audience is getting antsy to find out who you are. So before we go to break, are you okay revealing your voice? Here is my voice. Am I, am I giving you a good clue? Looking for accents, subtlety, what state she from? Think about it. Up next, can spicy foods give you an ulcer? I've got the spicy food challenge videos that will make your mouth hurt. Plus, just who's under this mask? Stick around. Back unmasking the biggest medical myths you fall for with my mystery masked guest. Now we've been counting down and we're down to the top three. Masked mystery guest, what is the next health belief that everyone and their mother thinks is true? Okay, do spicy foods cause stomach ulcers? How many of you think that's true? Yeah, half the audience. I mean, that's pretty, half dozen though. All right, that's a perfect kind of myth fact contest. So we, we decided to go to some surprising experts. People who have taken the craziest spicy food challenges. Take a look at some of the most death-defying challenges we found online. Peppers are red. Peppers are red. My throat feels like it's bleeding. It hurts to breathe. Yeah. No, my mouth hurts uh. so bad. Now my eyes are burning. That's why they're closed. Mm-mm. 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 Little big bites. <coughs> no, no, no. 
I should have worn a shirt with Jesus on it. What? No! I gotta say, that, that last little video of YouTube Queen Glazelle just caught my attention. She took one of the challenges and she's doing it with us right now. Glazelle, God bless you. You have done some crazy challenges on my show before, but we just watched you with a spicy pepper and you look like you were a real deep, profound pain. Why did you do that to yourself? Well, you know, you think that it's not gonna be so bad because other people have done it, but I really thought that I was not gonna make it. It burned my mouth up. Crazy time. Uh, are your lips green because of the pepper? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you, Dr. Did it hurt coming out too? Just asking. Oh, Dr. Oz. <laughs> well, yes, it did. <laughs> so, it burned all the way down. You could feel it, and it, it more than once. All right, with all that burning happening, were there any ulcers that you think you developed in your stomach? I was terrified of, of ulcers because I thought for sure that I was going to get some. But as of now, I don't think so. All right, well, you heard it from Glazelle. Thank you very much. There are no ulcers to Glazelle. What do you think? I mean, I hope not because I love spicy food. So let's just hope not because that would take away a lot of my diet. So I made a little demonstration for you to show you what spicy foods really do in your body. It's just a great mystery guest. We'll unveil this mystery together. So this is your body. There's your swallowing tube. The brain's up there, stomach's down here. You're all clear. Everyone's on the same page here, right? So when people eat, Healthy people, like Glazelle, eat spicy foods. Watch what happens. Watch the stomach carefully. Watch the stomach carefully. Is anything happening to the stomach? There it goes. All that spicy food, every last drop's in there. Guess what happens? The stomach starts to sense something's in there, senses the spice, it triggers the brain, fires it up there. The brain turns bright red, effectively, with the spice overload sensation. But nothing's happening in the stomach. You all notice that? Right? I don't see any ulcers going on in here. Do you? Do you see any mystery guests? I do not. All right, here's what really causes ulcers, right? When you eat too many non-steroidals, right? Those non-steroidals that many people are taking, or you get a bacterial infection in the gut, you get one of these non-steroidals in there, you be the bacteria in the gut, and what ends up happening is you start a, a cascade. Your stomach reacts, the mucus lining gets irritated, and the next thing you know, you've got a big problem happening. Now you've got a stomach lining that's really a problem, <laughs> And that stomach lining, because it's a problem, starts to allow the, the acid to burrow little holes in there. So as we look carefully, you see these little ulcers here? Can you see them? Right, little ulcers start forming. It's a big cause of ulcers in America. And so we don't think about it, but it's actually not the spicy food, it's other things we're putting inside of our gut, including things that might have bacteria in them. So I gotta say, the brain reactions, not from the ulcers, it's from the spice. So the concept that eating spicy food causes ulcers, it's a myth. Yes. Boom! I'm so happy to hear that. You happy that? That's so good. You like eating spicy food? I love spicy food. Is that a hint? That's a hint. That might All right, be a come hint. Come on over here. Now, before we unmask any more myths, it is time to unmask our mystery guest. All right, she's here. Now, here's what we know about her so far. Audience, put your thinking caps on here. She's on a TV show, a national TV show. Here's a photo of her smile. She's a reality star. You've got an accent that sounds like you're from near where we are right now, which is New York City. Give us a final clue. I'm from New Jersey. I knew it! I knew it. I own a clothing store named Envy. Oh. I have three kids, but a much bigger family like all good Italians do. All right, are you ready, audience? You wanna throw out some names? Yeah, I heard, yes, go ahead. I'm hearing a lot of people saying the same name, but I don't know if they're right. Are you ready to reveal yourself? I'm ask yourself. I'm ready. All right, we're gonna find out if the audience picked this up or not. The anticipation is killing me. Okay, bring the lights down. Let's see who the mystery guest is. The anticipation is driving all of us out of our minds. And it is, could it be? Is it her? It is Melissa Gorga. They were right for the Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> I gotta say, they all got you. There are so many people. I don't, I'm gonna, how, they were how, guessing how long me. ago did you guess it was her? A while I back? Knew from the second I walked in? Oh, she said from the get go she knew it was there you. you. Go. Okay. I, I, I'm not as sneaky as I thought. I was trying to play sneaky here. So, part of the reason we wanted you to come on is not just because of your current success <laughs> in the Jersey Housewives show, but also because you're a big fan of myths. 
I am, I am. I'm a huge fan of Miss, and I love when you unmask them and let us know the real truth. Like, this was great. Like, I need to know that when I eat this spicy food, it's okay. Yeah. And I have one other question. Please. My mother-in-law used to say, if you have a fever, take rubbing alcohol, yeah. rub it all over your face, your body, and it will break the fever. It'll cool you down, it actually works. But really? the question is, should you do it? Is the fever bad for you? And the fever kills off the viruses and the bacteria and not your own cells. So in our family, we don't treat the fevers too aggressively. Okay. But if you wanted to treat it because you're uncomfortable, it's not a bad idea. I love this, you know this. I know Dr. This. Gorga. There you go. All right. Let's now, scrub in. Next, number two in our countdown. Washing your hands with regular soap is the same as washing your hands with antibacterial soap. Myth or fact? What do you think, Mr. Guest? Um, I think that that's a fact. All right, Melissa did a little experiment. We had some people backstage wash their hands with regular soap, and then we had other people use antibacterial soap. And we tested their hands with a germ counter. They both loosened bacteria and viruses, so you can wash them away, that's clear. But we wanted to know, would they score differently on our device? Now, they had about a 1600 score before we started. Okay. So they were sort of dirty hands. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't very clean either. All right, are you ready for the results? I'm ready. Take it away. Okay, for regular soap, there was an average germ score of 255. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. How about antibacterial? I bet it crushed it. All right, well, for antibacterial soap, there was an average germ score of 243. It's very similar. There's no difference. Okay, so, so it's really no difference. That statement, it turns out, it is a fact. Washing your hands with regular soap, and it's the same as using antibacterial wow. soap, which is why we don't think you should use antibacterial soap anymore. You don't. No, why waste the money? Plus, you put a lot of stuff into the environment, not good for your, the environment, and it's not good for you. If it, listen, if you're gonna take a medication, it better help you. So a medicated soap doesn't make any difference if it's not making a difference in your life. Interesting. I like this. Oh, we, we got one more? I'm ready to bite. No, I'm, yeah. All right, when we come back, what's our number one medical myth we're gonna unmask? Stick around. We are back unmasking the biggest medical myths that you all fall for. Now, we just revealed that Melissa Gorga from the Real Housewives of New Jersey was our masked celebrity, and she's back to help us unmask the biggest health myth of all. Who do you think it is? Well, actually, what is the biggest health myth of the Real Housewives of New Jersey? Well, the well, the biggest myth, I would say, that everyone thinks our, sh our show is very staged. It's not staged. It's all real drama. This is really our lives. This is really how it goes. When they see all, like, the fashion show drama and, no, these people really say these things and do these things. Listen, I live in Jersey. I see that real time. Do you? On the streets of New Jersey. All the time. Is, you want to get drama moved to New Jersey. There's yeah, that's it. it. There's something in the water in Jersey. It's just how it goes. Are you ready for the unmasking? I am ready. Let's Come see Come on it. over. The number one myth, the number one myth of all time that we fall for is that the best thing to do to heal a hurt back is to rest. And Melissa says her husband, Joe, sometimes suffers from back pain, is he that does. right? He does, yeah, he does. He always thinks it's because he's driving a lot in a truck, yeah. so he's hunched over, but I just got him to start going to a chiropractor. I don't know if you think that's good or not. Yeah, I, I love chiropractors. Okay. Right? Chiry chiropractors actually help me when I have back pain. But the question is, what is it that causes our back pain, and what are we doing as our first line of defense that doesn't work? So when he's, when he's in pain, what does he do? Does he lie down in bed? He makes our children stand on his back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? Well, let's pretend. Okay, let's pretend. Let's, let's, if you, just show me what... Just lie on your, on your belly there. Okay. Just relax, right. rest. This yeah. is what happens most of the time, right? We're going to put a te this to the test. Is it a myth or a fact? So, Melissa's lying down. We, she's wearing the garb of pain, right, which is what we've got. Now, notice, she's lying there. There's nothing happening to the pain. There's nothing happening to the muscle. She's literally just lying there, right? Not seeing any real benefit. It turns out when you lie dormant, you can hop up. You're not going to get rid of any of that pain. Right. Now, come join me. Okay. Let me talk... The through, pain is not gone. The pain is not gone. Because <laughs> it doesn't frankly matter if you're lying on your stomach or your back or any other part of your body. Once you have the pain, you have the pain. Still here. Still here. So what, what, what might work is if you start to use the muscles. And the best way of doing it to me is posture. So stand nice with your top, top posture. Like a string is pulling your head up to the sky. Okay. Head back, next relax. Shoulders are perfect like that. But sort of back, but not too far. And then you sort of tilt your hip in, take the heat off the lower back. And all of a sudden, all this pain disappears. In fact... We're gonna take the whole mantle off you, so you don't have to wear it anymore. And that's part of the, 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 the treasure here, is how do you get to recover without doing a lot of extravagant things, is to stay active. Now, I don't know if this is true in your family, but there was a huge study of 25,000 people, and it showed, guess what? Married couples have more back pain. <laughs> Takes longer to get better. 
You know why wow. it takes longer for more back pain uh, pay sufferers who are married to get better? I'm dying to know. Because men are babies. This is right. I agree. We with lie you. down there like we just were demonstrating. <laughs> we have our kids walk on our back like Come Joe. On, really? we, we have the Melissa's of our lives cater to us with things well, we're asking. Women want to help us. They do everything for us. Meanwhile, we're lying like this, like little children, right? Not moving around, right? It says in sickness and in wow. health, get us off our tails, get us active, and when we move our back muscles, we'll get better faster. You, I'm definitely going to let Joe know this. Deliver he just that. needs to move. Exactly. Get up. <laughs> Stop it. Boom, boom, boom. All right. When it right. comes to the number one myth we all fall for, the best thing to do to heal a hurt back is not to rest. In fact, that is a myth. Melissa, thank you for being here. I enjoy thank you. my celebrity thank star. Thank you. Check out Melissa, season 10 of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. It's on Bravo Wednesdays at 8 p.m. I'll be right back. <laughs> Up next, we're revealing everything you need to know about the fast fashion industry. Could that favorite outfit you bought online make you sick? In today's world, fashion has gotten faster. Whether you're shopping at your favorite inexpensive chain store or on social media, buyer beware. Retailers, both online and in stores, who make clothes overseas have mastered a way to turn pricey runway looks into inexpensive clothing. They can go from factories to your wardrobe closet in a matter of weeks. But, but, you may be paying an even bigger price. Some of these fast fashion items may be made with chemicals that could be potentially harmful to your health. Today, we're revealing some chemical testing results to see if we found anything concerning in the clothes that you bought. And, this is important, there are scammers showing you beautiful clothes on social media that are anything but beautiful when they arrive. Let's start with our trend reporter and Dr. Oz show investigator, Maris Giappacampo, who went shopping. Like so many of you, I love fashion. I'm always on the hunt for new clothes, shoes, and accessories. When I shop in stores, I'm looking for stuff that's stylish and inexpensive. I want to buy things often and not feel guilty. The other place I love to shop is here on my phone. Let's see what pops up on Facebook and Instagram. Wow, this is so on trend. Add to cart. Oh, that is really cute. Oh my gosh, $10? Yes, definitely want that. Looks like an influencer picture, but it's actually the brand. It's selling the same lifestyle. So I'm all ready to check out, and I can't wait for this stuff to get here. Join me now as investigative reporter Mars Campo. Your boxes have arrived. This is the best part of my day. When I come home and see these packages, I get very excited. And you're mostly an online shopper, so this happens a lot. All the time. All right. So fast fashion is taking things to the next level. You get the option to buy something quick, cheap, and guilt-free. Plus, plus, you get the stylish take on expensive designers that no one can afford. But something stood out to you when you were shopping from these smaller social media centric sites versus the big retailer sites. Yeah. What is the difference? You know, I totally get the appeal because you can stay on trend and on budget. So it's a total win win, right? But you're not going to get everything that you get with a big retailer. For example, quality and sizing. So let's take a look at this. So when something arrives, you really want to give it a thorough scan through when it, when it first gets there, right? And one thing I noticed off the top look at this. This oh is my goodness. stained already. Can you all so see that? So here's the stain. It just arrived. It arrived with a stain on it. The other thing that I noticed, quality. I mean, look at this. There is no seam. There is no stitching. It's like they just cut it with some fabric scissors and it's really, really thin, no lining or anything. And that's part of the problem. You're really, in this case, probably going to wear it once or twice before it starts to fall apart. Now, this is not the only thing you bought. Right. She really went shopping. Yes. So there are some <laughs> other issues with sizing. So take a look at this. The, the, I think the ladies in the audience are going to love this. I normally wear a size medium, right? What size do you think this is? I mean, it looks, I don't know, medium? This is a <laughs> double XL. What? This is a double F for who? Like a garden gnome? Like yes. if this is a double XL, what does a small look like? <laughs> so this is a really big sizing problem. Here's the other issue. This is with quality, right? Look at this dress. Really cute, fringy dress. But look at the bottom of this. Look how these fringes are not even. And then if you pull them, they actually start oh my to come off. 
So this is a really big quality problem. Your dress would be falling apart at dinner. You, you really are not getting good quality. All right, here. <laughs> I, I did some shopping of my own. Okay. This little something for you. Oh, thank you. You got a little changing room behind you. Okay. Give it a shot. <laughs> this is something that we actually bought that should fit you. We're going to see if it matches what we actually thought we ordered. All right, let me bring in investigative journalist, Heath Herzog. Thank you for joining us, as Thanks always. Thanks for having me. I, this, is, this is an area where I trust you and Mara, because you've had a lot of experience. Explain what fast fashion is and why social media has become the hot spot for getting it out. I see my kids, they don't go to stores anymore. Right. They're on there, what's in there? So how do these guys monitor fashion so carefully? Well, so you know the fashion industry has seasons, right? You have spring season, summer, and then you have fall, winter. So when it comes to these fast fashion companies, they're monitoring these trends, they see them, and then they quickly turn it around, and they basically, it's called speed to market. Mm -hmm. So that means that they are able to get it in a very quick way to the source, sometimes within two weeks. But the way that it's manufactured may not be the best quality. Show us how they do it. All right. So you have here one of the factories, right? And reports have, you know, there's been reports that have said that these factories are not that safe and, you know, these workers are under, you know, a lot of pressure to turn this stuff around. Yeah. The reason why they're able to do this so quickly is because, one, the materials that they're using, as you saw Mara show you, very inexpensive materials and, you know, these workers are in these factories for a long periods of time. The fact was a big issue, but the part that really gets me are these pretty pictures they put on social media. Right. And they're so clever at getting you to think it's part of your normal feed. So clever. So I've been there. You go home, you put the kids to bed, you're sitting on the sofa and you're scrolling through and you see these beautiful pictures of these clothes that are on your favorite social media influencers and your bloggers and you think, oh my gosh, if I could only just look like that. And then all of a sudden an advertisement pops up and it looks similar to what they're wearing and the clothing is a little less expensive and you don't know what the quality is like. And I always worry that then you, you can't return them. And then the whole the, the safety net's gone. Absolutely. All right, let's check it on Mara now. She don't remember. She took the opportunity to get something on Instagram. She thinks she might like it because it looked really pretty in the pictures. To hear this perspective, and there she is. Huh. Well, I like your smile. <laughs> oh my goodness. So can, can I see the picture as it was supposed to look? Right. Do we have that here? <laughs> it doesn't quite live up to that. The pants are just a disaster. It feels like I'm wearing a trash bag because there's no lining. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and they fit terribly. They're baggy where they shouldn't be. They're wrinkly. I, I, this, I would have to throw this away if I couldn't return it. Yeah, it was not good use of your time. Not a good use or your of my time. All right, when we come back, we're going to reveal our very own chemical test results. Could your favorite outfit be making you sick? That's a bigger issue for me. Stick around. We're back with our investigation into fast fashion. We're asking, is that outfit you bought online making you sick? We have some chemical testing results to reveal in just a minute. But first, I want to meet Sam, who says she recently bought clothes from an online clothing retailer based overseas. Why do you want to get these tested? Yeah, so you know, I'm your average girl. I love to shop. So I would always see things like online posted, like cheap clothes, but they're really cute and trendy. Um, so I'm your girl that I get it in the mail and I want to put it on my body right away. So um, I'm wearing it and I love it, but I'm now starting to see some of these posts about maybe chemicals and something that could be harmful. So to think that's on my body, it's like a huge concern. Well, I was concerned as well when I found that with some of the big national testing mm -hmm. showing on these clothes. So we took some of your clothes, Sam was very kind of you, <laughs> and we began to chop it up, cut them in little pieces, send them to a lab, right? And then we put them through a bunch of chemical procedures, right? We wanted to extract materials. We wanted to dissolve the fabric at times in order to figure out exactly what chemicals. See, that's acid dissolving it. You wouldn't wear that, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> then we sent the, the clothes from both an inexpensive chain store um, as a control to the social media mm -hmm. stuff that you would purchase. And all of it ended up in little test tubes, and we had it tested. Uh, we can reveal the results of those if you're okay with it. Oh, gosh, yeah. All we'll right. see what happens. Right, stay focused. <laughs> I'm going to come back and talk to you about it. Sounds good. Depending on what we find. Thanks. All right. There's been a lot of testing on clothing by various groups. Joining us to reveal what they've discovered is founder and CEO of Accelerated Analytical Labs, Dave Metzger. Thank you for being here, Dave. Hi, Dr. Oz. Thank you. I love chemists. I love people to understand the basics of what's really going on. So sure. Dave's going to break it down for us in ways we can all understand. The first chemical that has been tested for in clothing is 
phthalates. So what has been found, and please ex educate us about phthalates. Sure, so phthalates are a scary chemical in that uh, they're used in a lot of plasticizers. So they're, they're uh, used to make plastic soft and f uh, easily applied to fabrics. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen shirts that have a movie scene on it or something like that, phthalates are being used to actually apply that. Okay. There's a, a very large organization that's been studying this since 2012 in the fashion industry, and they've found phthalates in actual high-end clothing lines, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, probably more so as you know doctor scientists kind of uh, talk between us geeks <laughs> is um, that it's an endocrine disruptor and right. you know better than anybody if the brain cannot talk via a hormone to an organ illness is going to develop yeah, and it'd be subtle illness you wonder if it's right. not the, you know there's not an arrow pointing at it you just won't feel yourself okay the next right. item that's been tested for a lot is lead and lead, of course, you know about from the paint and you know that used to be in the window so it's all banned yeah. but how can we have lead in our clothing well, it's, it's an excellent question, and this absolutely blows my mind. So lead is, to the EPA, uh, absolutely cannot be in soil. But they allow it to be in pigmentation. They allow it to be in the zippers. It's an alloy material. It's a heavy metal. So it's really scary stuff. We do not want this in our clothes, and especially uh, in baby garments, which actually a government organization found lead in baby garments and forced the company to recall those materials. Yeah, so again, lead, if it touches your skin, may not be an issue, but if you put it in your mouth, it's a problem, right? Well, it's often in times in the zippers, you know, it's in different parts of the, uh, the right. tags of the clothing, so kids put that stuff in their mouth. Right, so now of course you're ingesting lead, which we know is a problem. It changes their, their mental abilities and it's subtle again. You won't right. know what's happening until years after the fact. Right. The next chemical that's been tested for in clothing is formaldehyde. Why is there formaldehyde in clothing? You preserve I don't cadavers know. with formaldehyde. Yes, <laughs> you know the jars that we all see in the science laboratory? The formaldehyde. That's formaldehyde. <laughs> It's crazy. So formaldehyde is probably the scariest chemical that we actually worked with um, during this study. It's used as an anti-wrinkle in our shirts. It's used as an anti-shrinking agent in our shirts. It's uh, very, very prominent in creating the foil look that uh, some brands may use. It's also used in resins. So if you see jeans or shirts that have a wrinkled look to them or a textured look, they're actually putting formaldehyde into that fabric to keep it in that formation. Right, so Very scary. Skin irritant, and you get redness, itchiness, flaking. A lot of you will complain that you've got these weird rashes. Right. The clothing could be causing the rash. Right. One of the first things, you, and your doctor's not going to know that, guys, because your doctor's not going to know what clothes you're wearing. Now, in Larsdale studies, we found what you just described. Correct. Let's talk about what specifically happened in Sam's clothing, who she so kindly donated to us. Sure, so we did a lot of work. We analyzed a lot of different things, but we found that these three chemicals here were not present in <gasps> Sam's clothes. Not present? Yes. That is good news, Sam. <laughs> Are you relieved? Yes, I'm definitely relieved. Um, it definitely feels good to know that none of that is in my clothes currently, but to think that it could be a concern, I'm definitely gonna be more aware of that in the future. Hey, should we chop this clothing up and look at this also? <laughs> we can do it, we can do it backstage, Dr. Oz. <laughs> oh, so thank you very much, well described. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank All right, you. so as a thank consumer, you, it's important to feel good about the purchase you're making. You all readily appreciate how beneficial, affordable, trendy clothes are delivered to your door, I get that. Right? And I, I don't want you being scared of it. So I reached out to the Consumer Product Safety Commission for a statement, they said in part, the manufacturer is responsible for ensuring that exposure to the product does not present a risk of injury. So it's up to the manufacturer. Put the whole statement on DrOz.com. I'll be right back. Coming up, the great Barbara Corkin and I catch up on past guests whose businesses were changed after coming on this show. And I tell you how to turn your side hustle into a real business. I asked Shark Tank's Barbara Corker to join me because we have some amazing mompreneur success stories. I know she's gonna love hearing. Please welcome my good friend, Barbara Corker. Oh my goodness. Hi. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. You know, moms love seeing you. You've met so many of them. You've given life-saging advice, even on this show. Why are moms such perfect entrepreneurs? Because they are entrepreneurs when they're running the household. Think about it. 
They're managing people, they're managing their husband, their kids, they're uh, managing, negotiating with teachers, babysitters, they do budgets, they <laughs> figure out expenses, they already have this whole bundle of gifts that they could bring into the workplace. Guys don't have it. You all hear that? <laughs> She's right. <laughs> Well, today we have two updates from women who say meeting Barbara on The Dr. Oz Show changed their lives. Wow. Take a look at what happened when Barbara hosted a free class with tips on how to become a millionaire, and she met Lauren. Now, Lauren's got a question here that every entrepreneur should be asking themselves. Go ahead. Yes. So my product is Baby Soothe. It's a portable infant massaging device that easily and naturally soothes a crying baby anywhere on the go. Instead of your fingers. Instead of your So these fingers actually simulate a human touch oh, with music a little bit here on your belly <laughs> little uh -huh. belly action <laughs> oh, and a melody to, to put the baby to sleep that's exactly right okay and so my question to you Barbara is how do I price this correctly mm -hmm. well the pricing is key uh, and you want to walk up to ladies uh, dropping the kids off from school or nursery school or at the doctor's office and say would you buy this or what would you pay what would you pay let me show it to you and really ask them what's wrong with it that's the valuable information. What's wrong with this? So you correct it now before you go and mass produce it. Consider that someone needs to be paid other than you. Figure that in your cost as well. That's wonderful. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. I love that. Please welcome Lauren back to the show. Oh, she brought the baby suit with her. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's evolved. <laughs> you have a baby now, too. Yes, so yes. Give us an update. How are you doing? How's We're it? doing fantastic. I partnered with a fantastic company called Tranquilo uh, to help bring Baby Soothe to life. And we're selling on Amazon and TranquiloBaby.com. Wow. Who would have thought? <laughs> how, how does it feel, Barbara, to know you influenced Lauren so much? Well, it makes me feel good. I'm usually working with <laughs> entrepreneurs that are already in business, but to get a mom <laughs> off the ground and into business, I feel pretty proud, I have to say. Congratulations, very proud Thank of you. Thank you. Thank you so All much. All right, now check out this next guest, Nazia, who got the chance of a lifetime to pitch Barbara on a foodpreneur competition. We had it here right on the show. Joining us, Nazia, with her gourmet ghee butter. A lot of people have not heard about ghee butter. The people that have tried ghee butter that's in the market, unfortunately, have not experienced the real benefits that this ancient superfood has to offer. I started making some ghee butter. It was an instant success. Starting my business, I really wanted to set myself apart from the rest. Three things that we do very differently. We are getting a butter from France. That butter has the right fat content that ghee needs. Also, it is grass-fed and 100% natural. Number two, we are using rich superfoods in every single jar. Um, to, we are not masking our flavors with um, essences and aromas. And number three, and no other company does this, my company does this, key butter, we age it. We age it so you maximize and get those benefits in each and every single bite. Please welcome Nausea back to the show. Share something with everybody. Yes. You know, a, a, a lot of folks mm -hmm. want to win. They want to stay first. Mm -hmm. You actually lost the competition, mm -hmm. but you made the argument this may have been one of the best things. It actually helped you that you lost. How so? It definitely did. Um, rejection helps you make corrections, and that's one thing that I really learned from the show. It was so wonderful being here, and I took that opportunity and I ran with it. We actually been in. Uh, Oscar's gift bags. We're going to be in the Emmy's gift bags. We want to introduce this product to a lot of people. Yeah. So you've got something to say to Barbara. Barbara, you really inspire me. Your sayings always stick in my head of they want it, they want it, they want it. We got such great publicity, and it's really because of you. We're now working with Kathy Hilton, who's big. We're working with Hugh Jackman's coffee shop in the city, Laughing Man Coffee. And we hope that you one day like our ghee butter as well. And we, we She's going to sell us here. all in this. <laughs> right. I'll take it, I'll take it. We're very happy to be here. Thank, Thank you, for, Barbara. You're a hero. Thank you, so she are you. Really, Up next, Barbara is giving three Three easy tips anyone watching right now can use to turn their side hustle into a booming business. Stick around. Yeah. We're back with the shark with the sharpest bite on Shark Tank, Barbara Corcoran, and she's giving you, all of you at home, three tips on how to turn your side hustle into a booming business. 
side hustle. Yes. What does it mean? It means something you're doing temporarily that you're hoping will turn into a business. How does someone make a shift from a side hustle, brings in a tiny bit of money, yep. to becoming the main business that pays their bills? And you've got three tips. Yes, I do. I want you guys writing these down at home. Many yep. of you have side hustles. You could do much bigger and much better. First off, you want to fake it till you make it. Now, I know that's an old cliche, but no one's born with confidence. No one's born with knowing what they're doing. So it simply means act as though you do and people will fall for it. And when people <laughs> fall for it, a funny thing happens, you're falling for it too. And that's what actually builds confidence. I always tell my kids, act like you've been there before. Ah, okay. Even if you haven't. <laughs> All right, second, Same set, thing. set financial goals, create a real plan. A financial goal uh, is obviously necessary, but when you're beginning, uh, you don't really know what your financial goals are. I, for one, had a simple goal that I wanted to be the queen of New York real estate, and I had no idea how I was going to get there. Mm -hmm. So what I did instead is I just did pieces at a time, but I knew what those pieces were, and also I celebrated each of the pieces as they happened, because that's the best part of actually building a business. Yeah, most of us just complain about the failures. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Final tip. Think long term. This is going to be your future. You have to think long term, and there's so much emphasis put on having a rock solid business plan. I'm just not a believer in them. I'm a believer in having a rock solid image of who you want to be when you grow up, no matter how old you are. <laughs> and I find that that, if you could do everything in your power to make that happen, the little pieces of who you envision yourself to be, sure. it's the best way to really get there for the great majority of particularly women, I have to say. Barbara, you do so much. I love seeing your names all over every real estate brochure I ever look at. God bless you for your success. Thank you very much. You can much. watch Barbara on Shark Tank every Sunday at ABC and be sure to subscribe to her new podcast, 888 Barbara. It's available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. You're an angel. You're the power you, of Dr. one Oz. brought alive. Incarnate. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. One person, everybody. One voice speaking the truth. We'll see you next time.